Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. On today's episode, episode 127, we are in Song of Solomon, or what a lot of Bibles will call it is Song of Songs, which might be the actual title of the book. And I've called today's lesson, My Beloved. We're going to cover Song of Solomon 1 through 8. We're actually just going to cover a couple of the chapters, about half of the book. It's a short book, easy read. And um, so Song of Solomon, it's... It's one of these books that deals with presumably the marriage between Solomon and uh, an unknown woman. Uh, The interesting thing is it calls this guy the shepherd. And the other problem with this book is that, uh, because we don't know, did Solomon write it? Did somebody else write it referring to Solomon? Did somebody else write it about their own self and pass it off as Solomon's? We don't know. But the, the difficulty with this book is if you go and grab a couple of different translations off your, your bookshelf and you open them all up to Song of Solomon, what you will find is that there are four basic voices here. Um, yeah, four basic voices here. So you have the bride, you have the groom, which might be Solomon, right? You have the friends, and then you have God. And so these are the four voices that are represented in this book. Where there is disagreement is who's talking. And so the editors, like you'll have a little heading that says the bride spoke or the groom responded or the friend said or God declared. You have those little subject headings in there that break it up. But the problem is that no one agrees on that. So it doesn't tell us that, hey, he said this or she said this or the friend said this. So it's kind of left up to us a little bit as readers. Of course, we're not as educated as those people who are putting the Bible together, right? But the people who are really well educated in putting the Bible together, they disagree on where these breaks occur. So these headings that I have here that I've copied and pasted from the ESV Bible, uh, maybe are right, maybe are not. But let's read the text. Song of Solomon 1, beginning in verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your name is oil poured out. Therefore, the virgins love you. Draw me after you and let us run. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will exult and rejoice in you. We will extol your love more than wine. Rightly do they love you. And so this this is clearly the bride, right? Because she says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. She talks about wanting to be in love with the groom. She talks about how she wants to be brought into his chambers. She goes on to say, presumably here the bride still, I am very dark, but lovely daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Keter, like the tent curtains of Solomon. Do not gaze at me because I am dark, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. And so she's dark. She was a worker in the field. She wasn't left at home to be soft and stay in shade and lay on linen couches. She was a laborer. And she says, I'm dark like the tents of Keter, and I'm like the curtains of Solomon. And and so uh, Keter is uh, one of the places where Solomon would get his horses from. He would buy horses from the people of of Q and and, uh, Egypt and I think Keter as well. So Keter was responsible for a lot of the sheep and the goats. That's what it was that Solomon would buy. So he says, don't gaze at me because I'm, or she says, don't gaze at me. And then she says, verse seven, we think she says, tell me you who my soul loves, where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. For why should I be like one who veils herself beside the flocks of your companions? So probably still the bride. Now, this is where there's some debate. Verse 8, who's talking here? Is it the friends? Is it Solomon? Um, A lot of places will say that verse 8 is the friends speaking. And they say, if you don't know where he is, the most beautiful among women, follow in the tracks of the flock, pasture your young goats by the the shepherd's tent. So most people would agree, and I I think that this is right, that this here is Solomon when he says, I compare you, my love, to a mare among Pharaoh's chariots. Your cheeks are lovely with ornaments and your neck with the strings of jewels. This is an interesting phrase. I compare you to a horse. Uh, probably not the best move in the 21st century if you're on your first date with somebody like, hey, I compare you to a horse. But this is actually quite complimentary because Solomon did per, did receive his horses from Pharaoh and from Egypt. And a mare harnessed to the chariots of Pharaoh was very, very unusual, very, very unlikely. And so he's he is establishing some value to this woman. He says, you're, you're rare, you're beautiful, you're prized. And he talks about how beautiful she is. Uh, he says, he says, my beloved is to me, um, or maybe she says, while the king was on his couch, my nard gave forth its fragrance. So this is probably her at this point. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards of Engedi. 
Behold, you're beautiful, and this is probably him again. Behold, you're beautiful, my love. Behold, you're beautiful, your eyes are doves. You're beautiful, my beloved, truly delightful. Our couch is green or verdant is another translation there. It means fresh and full of life. The beams of our houses, our cedars, our rafters, our firs. And then so she's going to speak. She says, I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. So this is their kind of courtship and their pursuing of one another and they love one another. She says, as an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among young men. With great delight, I sat in his shadow and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house. His banner over me is love. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am sick with love. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the does, that you do not stir up or awaken love until it so pleases. So this right here, I think is repeated three times. It might be... uh, four times, but I, I'm pretty sure it's three times in the book of Song of Songs, where she says, don't arouse or awaken love until it's time. And I think from a practical standpoint, that's pretty good advice. Don't don't rush it, right? Wait until the time. Uh, and so one of the things that it says here in chapter two that I love a lot, it says here in, well, let me see here. Yeah. It says here in verse 15 and 16, it says, catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards, for our vineyards are in blossom. My beloved is mine and I am his. He grazes among the lilies. And I, I love this verse, catch for us the little foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyard. So they're watching out for the things that would hinder them uh, and would, would destroy their relationship. Now look, chapters four, uh, chapter five, chapter seven, all of these deal with chapter, chapter four is the wedding. Chapter five is the wedding night. Chapter seven speaks of their, their physical relationship and their physical intimacy. And it's, it just kind of conveys how they delight in one another and how they rejoice in one another. Then chapter eight, I really enjoy. It's just the closing remarks of this. She says, oh, that you were like a brother to me who nursed at my mother's breast. If I found you outside, I would kiss you and none would despise me. In other words, sister sees her brother, hadn't seen her brother a little bit. She goes up and she hugs her brother, gives him a kiss. No one's going to freak out. But she's like, I, I'm not allowed to do that in the presence. You know, you're the king. I can't just walk up to the king in the presence of all these people and kiss the king. That would create issues. So he, she says, I would lead you. I would bring you into the house of my mother. She who used to teach me. I would give you spice wine to drink and the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand is under my head. His right hand embraces me. And then she says it again. Here's one of the other places it says it. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. Who is that coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Under the apple tree I awakened you. There your mother was in labor with you. There she who bore you was in labor. So set me, and this is a beautiful text here, verses 6 and 7. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. And then look at verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he would be utterly despised. In other words, real love, there's no price that you could pay that would make me give up real love. Like it's, it should, I don't know. What just came into my mind was the princess bride, right? And so like true love can, can conquer Uh, anything for farm boy Wesley. So anyway, uh, that should be what we write about next, but we won't because that's not the Bible and never mind. And I'm dating myself. But verse eight, we have a little sister. So now here are some friends. We have a little sister and she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build on her a battlement of silver. If she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. They're trying to protect their young sister. I was a wall and my breasts were like towers. Then I was in his eyes like one who finds peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman, and he let out the vineyard to keepers, and each one was to bring for its fruit a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, my very own vineyard, is before you, O Solomon. You may have the thousand and the keepers of the fruit, the two hundred. You who dwell in the gardens. And and this is probably him um, in verse 13 and then her in verse 14. So this is how... This is how the New American Standard used to break it up. I don't know if they still break it up this way. I haven't looked at that lately. But, oh, you who dwell in the gardens with companions, listening for your voice, let me hear it. And then she says, make haste, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spice. And so the Song of Solomon, Song of Solomon nearly didn't make it into the Bible because people were concerned about the the explicit nature of it or the apparent explicit nature of it. And, and so it nearly didn't make it into the Bible, but 
it should be a picture of love. It should be a picture of uh, physical desire and, and love that is as strong as death. But the problem that we have is if we lay this song, or if we lay this book at Solomon's feet, we're like, the dude had over a thousand wives, right? Like a thousand wives between wives and concubines. So it feels like it undermines it just a little bit when you think about it from that perspective. And, and so what we're going to say, though, is that this is what it would look like to have um, a deep and passionate love, a husband and a wife to have a deep and passionate love for one another. And we're going to say that Solomon did not maintain a deep and passionate love for his wife because he kept accumulating more and more. And then we also know that he became idolatrous. So uh, I will say to you what my college pastor used to say is like, in certain situations like this, you kind of have, it's like eating trout, have very fine bones in it. You eat the meat and you pick out the bones. And so, so Solomon, who I think wrote this, uh, Solomon, let's use this as an example of what a beautiful, godly marriage, godly, deep, passionate love should look like. And then Solomon's terrible example of accumulating more wives, let's throw that out. We don't want to be like Solomon in the later years where his heart was deceived by false gods. And so that, my friends, is Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs. And that takes care of episode 127. Tomorrow we're going to be in the book of Job. We're going to do Job in four parts. And tomorrow specifically we'll be in Job chapters 1 and 2 if you're interested to read ahead and join us then. Have a great day. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.